God is in charge. Yes, is. I say to those of you who have loved ones who are, who are dealing with chemotherapy and radiation and all of the, the uh, dreaded results and events that take place with cancer, hold your head up yes. and trust God. Yes. Trust him for the miracle. And we believe that God is in it. And we don't worry about that. Sometimes I ask for an amen just to, to, to kind of help myself believe it. You don't have to say amen. 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 And then the final thing I want to say is I have I have stepped out of my uh, zone of being in support of my wife on uh, this day, Mother's Day celebration, uh, because she has, she has chosen many years ago when she buried her mother on Mother's Day uh, that this would not be a day that she would be in church uh, so that she would not have to be around uh, other mothers and people celebrating their mothers. And, and we have taken that time to go to the beach and to go wherever and to enjoy ourselves. But this Sunday, uh, it's been, it's been, I believe, four years, five years since I preached a Mother's Day message. And I have called on the ladies of our ministerial staff to preach. I have invited guest preachers to come in. Uh, but somehow, I believe I need to do this for myself. Amen. Amen. I'm Amen. a strong believer in the voice of the shepherd. Amen. Amen. Because I am the shepherd. I, I want you to uh, hear my voice especially on this occasion. Can I just sort of rehearse something for our newer members uh, that has to do with the extraordinary first lady that we have uh, at this church. All right. Uh, we, we <laughs> many years ago, uh, her mother would come uh, and spend about a month with us. And uh, she would make sure that she was in church on Sunday. And she would be a part of the mothers and she would be seated with the missionaries and, and enjoying the service. But when she went home to be with the Lord, um, we, we took her back home to North Carolina. Uh, and uh, the only service that we could come up with that made sense was on Sunday, which happens to be Mother's Day. So we made the, the trip there with our family, and uh, on that Sunday morning, as we were preparing for uh, the funeral service, you know, down south they have funerals on Sunday in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, we look up, and there were two van loads and several cars mm -hmm. of members of the New Calvary Baptist mm -hmm. Church who had taken the seven-hour drive to. Washington, North Carolina, Amen. to be there in support uh, of their first lady. And it lifted her spirits in such a manner that she was excited to call uh, her mother's neighbors and best friends across the street and next door. And she said, would you let them come in there and, and use your, your bathroom and your bedroom to dress for the service? And it just became a little fellowship right there in that little neighborhood as our members prepared themselves to be with us at that time. Um, the home going of Miss Cleo uh, Outlaw in Washington, North Carolina. So uh, she has been forever grateful for the way you demonstrated by your actions how much you love her and how much uh, you appreciate the fact that you would take out from your Mother's Day and make the trip. Now that happened almost 30 years ago, but I'm still excited about it and proud to say that that's how we started. So let me say what I've come to say. I won't be before you long, as I always say. Y'all have reservations somewhere. Uh, <laughs> later on this afternoon, you get with your family members and, and something on the stove, on the warmer, and it's ready for a day of celebration. But this is my opportunity to do what the Lord has called me to do. May I call your attention to the Word of God in the book of Proverbs. 
told uh, Deacon S. Thomas Cena that there was a guest preacher for uh, this morning. She said, well, we're not going to worry about that. I'm, I'm saying that you need to get the outline and do what you have to do. So uh, I'm operating as a guest preacher this morning. All right. Look for me next year. So we're in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28, it is a very familiar portion of scripture that is used at this time of year. It is used in honor of women and in particular uh, mothers. In Proverbs 31, verse 28, it simply says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. You may be seated. We pray God's blessings upon you to the hearer and the doer of his word and he's in in prayer uh, our own brother uh, Richard Brewington he sent his sister home with the home going service on yesterday um, and that family is in need of your prayers which you keep Sister Barbara and Hubbard in prayer. That is the daughter of our own mother, Vivian Wilson. She lost her husband. We will be giving him his homegrown service in just a couple of weeks. Keep the church family in prayer. Granville Church, you are here. Amen. The church has gone to be with the Lord. The family is coming from Virginia Beach, Virginia to make arrangements for his ongoing. So death uh, is in our midst, uh, but we believe that God is able. And I know again that I'm right about it. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, I, I give this moment to you as you take over my heart, my mind, and even my lips. That what I say would be in agreement your will for these your people. And what I say would be a word of encouragement, a word of gratitude to women who are so worthy of our appreciation. So Lord, it's a shame that we only set aside one day. But in as much as this is that day, let us do right by it and honor these our mothers. And as we honor them, Lord, we honor the sainted memory of those who have gone from labor to reward. We are yet living off of their grace and contributions to our lives. So have your way. And then, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, may they be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. Let every child of God who loves the Lord say, Amen. 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 Her children rise up and call her blessed. Amen. Her husband also. And he praises her. Can I ask y'all a very obvious question? Come on, Mary. Well, where, where would we be without our mothers? Come on. Amen. I can, I can close the Bible and take my seat because, because that thing right there, you answered in your mind and in your heart, you know the answer to that question. This is the day that we formally honor them and, and we, we reflect on the profound impact that mothers have had on our lives. I, I use the word formally because mothers are worthy of being celebrated, being honored every day, not just on this calendar day. There was a British actress, an author by the name of Susan Gale, she wrote and she said, mothers are like glue. Even when you can't see them, they're still holding the family together. And all the women in the church, That's because mothers embody the evidence of life. Yeah. Tireless labor for their families and boundless love for their families. Right. 
And our chosen text here in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28, gives us biblical perspectives in three key aspects of their roles. Right. In the roles in, their, in our life, uh, their labor and their love. Can I talk about it? <laughs> uh, Dr. Wright, this, this may have been one of the shortest introductions in my preaching career. Because I want to get to my first point. First of all, mothers are vessels of life. Proverbs, Proverbs 31, verse 28 says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. In the journey of life, mothers are the vessels. They are the God's instruments through which God bestows the gift of life upon all of us. Amen. They nurture us from the moment of conception, yes. selflessly sacrificing their own comfort for the well-being of their children. Amen. Just as the proper 31 woman is praised for her virtuous character, so too do we honor mothers for their invaluable contributions to the fabric of our existence. Yes. Lake yes, Ford, yes. Maya Angelou, uh, she said, a mother is the vessel through which life flows, <laughs> nurturing seeds of potential into blossoming realities. Uh -huh. Think of all the countless nights a mother spends away comforting a crying child. Recall uh -huh. all of the tender moments when, when she bandaged your scraped knee and kissed away your tears. Yes, sir. In, in these acts, we witness the beauty of life, so much so that, that we recognize uh, her devotion, whether our mothers are still with us or gone to their reward. Yet still, we rise up this day, yes. and we call you blessed. Yes. In the Bible, the, 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 the word blessed is, it, it means happy or content or satisfied. Two mothers are not happy, they're not content, they're not satisfied until they know that their children are all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have a look at uh, my mother, when I moved away, she would come and see me very infrequently. And when she came, she didn't stay long. But when she came, she looked at me, she hugged me, she kissed me, and she said, I'm all right now. And it wasn't long before she was ready to go home. <laughs> because she had been contented with what she saw and what she observed in her child. Yes. We call her blessed simply because she fulfills one of her purposes of being here. Yes. And this is not just a family secret. The writer says that children rise up. Now, that, that term, rise up, means that they stand up publicly. And they declare to all who can hear in the world that our mother is blessed. Yes, sir. Everybody can't say that. Woo. Because all mothers are not who they should be. But I come to talk about the ones who are they, who they ought to be. But ours are blessed. And because she's blessed, her children are blessed. And because she's blessed, we are blessed. That's why we're here today. This is a rise up moment. A moment of gratitude and, and celebration of our incredible mothers. And if you still have your mother with you today, let me tell you something. I want you to know how wonderfully blessed you are right now. Uh, they're not only the 
vessels of life, but motherhood is a labor of love. Yeah. Come on. Listen to first. Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, uh, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And this is what I want you to hear. Knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. True motherhood does not exist outside of labor. <laughs> there was a time when there was no such thing as a lazy mother. <laughs> because they were raised right. They, they were trained and they saw good examples. Not too much. <laughs> Beginning with the pains of, of labor and birthing us into the world, true motherhood is a labor of love, requiring steadfast dedication and unwavering commitment from the mundane task of daily care, cleaning up, picking up after uh, uh, us, uh, to the monumental responsibilities of shaping young minds. Mothers work tirelessly, often behind the scenes. This is the word to young mothers. Young mothers must be careful how you talk and how you handle life's challenges. Because guess what? There's, a young, there's young eyes and, and young ears and a young mind soaking up all that you do and say. Get in there later. They find fulfillment knowing that their efforts are not in vain because they are sowing seeds of love yeah. and faithfulness right. into their families. Yeah. Amen. all of those sacrifices that a mother makes to ensure that her children have the best opportunities in life. Mm. Can I tell you about my personal story of my mother's sacrifice? My mother labored for almost 10 years as a maid, as a, a housekeeper in the Catholic priest's uh, living quarters. Wow. And she did it in exchange for her five children to afford to attend a private parochial school, St. Mary's Catholic School, tuition free. Mm -hmm. wow. As a result, she was able to put all five of her children through a private school, and we are still here today reaping the benefits of her love and her sacrifice. Mothers put their own dreams on hold, their own careers on hold, sacrificing sleep and resources in order to provide for their families. And in her labor, we see the epitome of selflessness and devotion. Come on. Uh, this quotation is from an unknown author, but, but it says it all. It says, motherhood is the exquisite inconvenience of being some other person's everything. Oh, yes. Whatever you need mama to be. Come on. One day she's the doctor. When you get older, she's the boy. Each nine months 
cycle for each child is different. Yes. 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 You remember uh, the character Dorothy on, on one of my favorite old time shows, uh, uh, The Golden Girls? I think Dorothy was the leader of the pack. That was the author, right? Yeah. Uh, she, she said, if motherhood was easy, fathers would be somewhere trying to do it. <laughs> Come on. But we don't want no part of that. <laughs> so, so mothers are, are vessels of life, and true motherhood is a labor of love. Finally, I'll close with this. Mothers exemplify boundless love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, it says, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own ways. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all, believes all, hopes all, and endures all. I think that that was looking at a mother when, when he spoke these words. Because they speak of the ones whom we honor here today. Above all, mothers exemplify the boundless love described in this text. Their love is patient and kind. It's enduring through trials and, and tribulation. It is a love that knows no bounds, willing to sacrifice, willing to take everything on for the sake of their children's happiness yes. and their well-being. Yes. We can never begin to count all of the sacrifices a mother makes out of the love for her child. Amen. And let me tell you why they're countless. Because there are some sacrifices that mama made for you. You don't know anything about it. Come on. On the sleepless night spent tending to a sick child, to the sight and prayers whispered for their protection. A mother's love knows no measure. It is love that goes beyond words, speaking volumes through their actions. So today, I'll be ready to have two We rise up and, and we honor mothers for their unwavering dedication to life. To their, for their tireless labor and their boundless love. Yes, yes. May we never take for granted the invaluable role that they play in shaping our lives and nurturing our souls. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, let us give thanks yes, for the priceless gift that mothers uh, strive in our, on our behalf. Yes, and then let us try to irritate their virtues of selflessness, yes. of sacrifice yes. in our own lives. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Come on. I, I know somebody, one of, one of the, 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 the armchair theologians that are with us today. <laughs> Do you think that I've left out the last part Good. of our text? Good. But I did. Uh, uh, the proverb says, her children rise up and call her blessing. But it also says, her husband also, and he praises her. You know, the writer of Proverbs says that the husband also recognizes the gift that he has in the person of the mother of his children. Uh, and, and, and if he's like me, he thinks back on all of those times. Or when they labor together, father and mother, yes. to raise yes. their children. Yes. And most of those duties fell on mom, the one who stayed home, while the husband was somewhere working or, or somewhere doing whatever. <laughs> she was the one yes. who planned the meals, yes. who yes. organized the household. Yes. The writer, he says, and her husband praises her also. Amen. The, the lucky husband, he says to himself, don't you leave me out of the celebration. I too am a beneficiary of this mother's labor and her love. I too have been blessed because this woman that God gave me is good. Yes. It's good to come home to a comfortable 
my orderly house. Yes. Where I can lay down my burdens for a little while yes. and then to enjoy my family. Yes, yes. He says, I have to praise her also for being the voice of reason when I'm about to go off the deep end. Yes. When trouble breaks out for her loving advice, uh -huh. I praise her. Yes. For her encouragement in times of trouble, I praise her. Yes. Great or small, she's always there. Yes. So I too must rise up and call this woman of God blessed Amen. and give her her flowers while she can enjoy Amen. it. Amen. Today we thank God for the mothers in our lives. We even thank God for those who have returned home to be with him. We honor all of our mothers. Past and present. Gifts from heaven. Jewels on earth. And pillars in our home. Praise God for mothers who birthed us. Minister um, in 
on the staff here, Minister Millicent Ayers. She's one of those behind the scenes workers. I met with her and visited and she, she told me it was time for some fresh oil. And, and she asked me, how long have we been using the other oil? And I was ashamed to tell her. <laughs> so her husband arrived here today with fresh oil. Amen. And, and he simply uh, followed her instructions. She told him, tell Rev, he's ready. I prayed over it. I fasted over it. I talked to God about it. And he's ready for the people of God to be anointed. Let's talk to God. Father in heaven, you know all about our situation. We don't come with flowery words. We don't come with words of introduction. We need you, Lord. Yes. That, that's really the, the, the basis of our prayer. We need you. There's some hurt going on in our lives. There's some things going on that are about to pull us apart. And we run out of answers. We don't know what to do with the situations that we find ourselves in. Self-inflicted, but nevertheless, we, we're in trouble, Lord. And we come asking that you would see us through. Clear the path that is so filled with obstacles and the wrong words. and Give us, Lord, a light at the end of this dark tunnel. Lord, we come on behalf of those who are sick in their physical bodies. Mm. We've done all that the doctor said to Took all of the medicine, went through all of the procedures and all of the therapy, and here we are still sick. So we turn to Jehovah Rapha, the God of our healing. And you said, Lord, the Bible counts out 39 stripes on the back of Jesus. But hundreds of years earlier, the prophet Isaiah said, by his stripes, hmm, we will be healed. We come today, Lord, seeking and declaring and claiming our healing. Some of us have the kind of faith where we can thank you in advance. Yes, yes, we leave out of here healed and whole. Yes, Maybe not the manifestations yes, of such, yes, but in our hearts and in our minds, we know we will. Yes, yes, we know you're working. Yes. God, we know that while we're sleeping, you're working the night yes, shift, yes, healing and making ways for us. Yes, yes, Lord, in addition to healing, some of us are, are, are broken emotionally. We're still carrying baggage from our last relationship, from our childhood, from our previous marriages and our, our previous experiences. We need you to release us. Lord, we drop the bag right where they are. We don't care who picks them up, but we're done with them. We're done with hurt. We're done with self-hatred. We're done with fear. We're done with anxiety. We're done with being sorrowful all the time. We reclaim our joy today. In the name of Jesus. We reclaim our homes to be filled with joy and happiness. That confusion and dysfunction would, would go out the back door. And never come in again. Bless us going and coming on our jobs, on our journeys, in our evolution from who we are to who we need to be. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Lord, 
watch over our children in these dangerous times, in these wicked times in which we live. Watch over our children, protect them from those who prey on innocent children, those who will try to turn their minds and lead them astray. Have them confused about who they are and their, their gender assignments. Bless them, Lord. Insulate them from all of that. But Lord, we recognize we have a responsibility to live upright before them. Have your way, God. Sometimes the wrong words come out of our mouths. Sometimes we react wrong. Forgive us, Lord. Strengthen us in that area of weakness. Even as the pastor, Lord, some words will jump out of my mouth. Then I look around and hope that the saints are not in earshot. Help us all, Lord. We thank you today, Lord, for what we do have. We're so busy begging, Lord, we got to stop and thank you for what we already have. We've got homes and jobs and cars, possessions, family, peace, health. Let us not be so filled with what we are begging for that we, we forget how blessed we already are. We thank you for our mothers. Those here with us and those who have preceded us by going to glory. What a mighty God you are. And we thank you, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, I don't even want to look back on life without Jesus. How did I make it without Jesus? Where did I wind up without Jesus? But he's in our lives. And we praise him today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.